Good afternoon. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Todd Carton. Maryland takes it over Notre Dame 11 to 9. In some ways, it was closer than that. And in other ways, boy, I, you know, you could see a way that Maryland could have won by more. Todd, what did you see on the field at Notre Dame? Well, I saw a couple of things, Wayne. First of all, the to me, the co MVPs of this game are Logan McNaney and Luke Weirman. I mean, Weirman was phenomenal, 18 out of 24 faceoffs. The wing, his wing play was great too. I get a lot of credit to the guys on the wings. And and McNaney, you know, I think had a dozen saves and only gave up nine goals. So you had that. I thought Maryland hit three or four posts during the game, maybe more. Um, Cap, uh, uh, Entenman, who I guess his, his uh, ability to save went a little stale, but um, or, or crumbs on top, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I thought that uh, he got helped out by his post a lot. And, and you know, credit to Maryland for, for gutting it out. I thought Notre Dame really fought hard. It was very physical. Uh, I thought they did a great job going after loose ground balls. And, you know, out-physical out Maryland in, in some ways. And I thought the, the officials let them out-physical Maryland. And every time Maryland tried to get, a physical, get physical, it seemed like they had a yellow flag go flying up in the air. It did seem that way for a bit. Uh, Notre Dame had a surge to cut it from nine to five. Uh, they really cut into the Maryland lead, had all of the momentum. And then that Maryland defense for a moment made just stop Notre Dame in their tracks again. And Maryland's offense did enough to win that game down the stretch. Uh, Maryland turned into a volume shooting team again. Not a great look for the Terps. It was yeah, it really was long. Kyle Long uh, made enough plays. Maliver stepped up. Your usual suspects that led to Maryland's domination and a 5-0. Uh, Jack Brennan, I thought, also really stepped up today. Donville struggled. And I, I, to come back just a second to Weirman, I, I mean, he was 18 out of 24, and I think he lost the first three. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. Maryland dominates the Fogo. Geppert was amazing on the ground balls. You yep. got another, you got a goal out of Puglisi. Uh, Maryland's middies, the D middies, were outstanding again. In fact, a few of the times where there were breakdowns, it was on the, the long pole defense. Yeah, it had a few uncharacteristic absolutely errors. Abs absolutely was. I think that's a really good observation. I thought at the, I, and I hate to call players out, but I thought at the end of the third quarter and the beginning of the fourth, uh, Brett Makar, who's, you know, you're all everything long, long, long uh, stick midfielder, made three almost cost very costly plays he had a turnover he let uh Kavanaugh get around him one-on-one -on -one for score a late goal and then in the face off of the first face off of the fourth quarter he just watched the ball go out of bounds when he could have picked it up and the official awarded the ball to Notre Dame but he has been a stalwart defensively for the he team. has he, re he really has you know one of the things that it came up in the press conference last week was I think it might have been Bruce who asked Tillman, do you think that the media is too critical because you still find things that don't work right, even though you're the number one team in the nation, even though home or away, you find ways to dominate the end of games, not the end of quarters. In fact, Maryland's had a few letdowns at the end of quarters, but at the end of the game, Maryland is a five-star number one ranked beast to contend with. Um, and Tillman said, no, there's always things to work on. This is college level lacrosse, and there's always places to get better. I'm not sure whether to be amazed that Maryland still finds a way, and I think I'm going to stick with that, amazed that Maryland still finds a way. Georgetown stumbles. Notre Dame has stumbled. 
Other teams have had bad outings, not Maryland. Yeah. Uh, but you, when you win that many faceoffs and you have the ball in the offensive zone that much, and Maryland ends up being a team that seemed to be a bit leaky. It's not sloppy. It's just a bit leaky that every pass – you're so used to Maryland's passes being pinpoint, and they hit the guy right in stride, and, and Maryland scores goals, more goals than usual, where the receiver of the pass – who scores the goal takes one step and the ball's in the net. It's yeah. right on time every time, but not today. Yeah, and I, that it's funny because there were a couple that they did manage to do that. There was one early where Donville had a pass right on the doorstep and he and he flung it wide. And then late, uh, I think it was DeMeo got, I, I mean, the, the Terps on, on the next to last possession. I mean, there was such great ball movement and DeMeo had a wide open shot that, you know, I, I, I think I texted you at the time and said, he's got to put that in the back of the net. So, he does. so you know, there, amazing. there were a few moments like, like that were, that were typical Terps. And then there were a lot of moments where the, that pass was just off just enough. Uh, to throw the throw the rhythm of the, the offense off a little bit. So with all of that, both good and bad, Maryland survives in another trip to Notre Dame, coming out 11-9 winner. You've got Albany, and then what's shaping up to be a baby Final Four, Maryland UVA, Duke Towson at Audi Field two weeks, and then it becomes Big Ten play the rest of the way. It seems like the season's, to me, suddenly seems very short. <laughs> it it does that, Wayne. It can com, seems to compress, and I'll tell you what: the older you get, the faster that compression happens. <laughs> Boy, it, it's happening for me this year. I still think we're in a, a final four. This is a national championship run. It was from day one. It still is. Um, well, one of the things you got to say, I you know, I I picked a little picked at some little things, but you got to be happy if you're Maryland and you're a Maryland fan that that you know Donville didn't have a great game, Keegan Khan didn't have a great contribution, Bubba Fairman scored some early, seemed to be absent late, and yet Maryland still has enough versatility, enough strength on defense, and just an, again enough versatility in their offense to have guys step up and come away with a win. And the record for Maryland now under Tillman, when they score 10 or more goals, has got to be just in, almost incomprehensible. Well, that part, good good call out there, Todd. The fact that Maryland has an all-star team, and if you can shut down for a bit was Naskis, if you can take away Keegan Khan's ability to pass the ball and think you're going to win, all of a sudden you've got Kyle Long, you've got Molliver, um, and a, and a host of others that come in and score anyhow. So Maryland's it's really hard to take away the Maryland offense. You really, you're going to have to outscore them at some point, and that's impossible as well. So if there's anything you can do to stop Maryland, it's to make sure the passes don't land on time, to try and be in the passing lanes nonstop. It takes tremendous defensive effort to do that. Nobody's been able to do it yet this year. Yeah, and you have and you have to neutralize uh, right now as things are shaping up. You have to neutralize Weirman at the faceoff X because you know if Maryland gets those kinds of possessions, I, I I just they're they're all virtually impossible to beat. Right now, Maryland's sixth in offensive faceoff uh, percentage in all the, the entire NCAA, and I'm pretty sure after today they're going to move up in that ranking. Yeah. So overall, it's, it's always a good day when you can beat Notre Dame. We'll leave it at that. I'm yep. Wayne Viner. Just That's a quick uh, quick shout out to the women's lacrosse team who put 19 to 6 or 7 on down at William and Mary today. And Aurora, accordingly, the transfer from Hopkins just continues her phenomenal play. Five goals and three assists, I think she had, playing about three quarters of the game. Well, for doing shout outs, we got to give one to Mason down in Jacksonville. His Jacksonville Dolphins, 22, ranked on the women's side, 8th. And the men's side, they get a nice column from the Baltimore Sun today. Uh, many of the Jacksonville Dolphins are Baltimore area uh, transplants down there, so they're looking great. And one, two, young Terp Jordan Viner up at Temple, top 20 lacrosse on the women's side, went to your alma mater, UMBC, 
and put a comeback a for them yesterday in the second half. They just dominated that second half against UMBC. UMBC couldn't win a draw. Temple was really efficient offensively. I watched a good piece of that game. I know you were there. I was. And that'll do it for today. Check back tomorrow after the Michigan State basketball game. I'm sure Bruce will be on the post game, probably with Todd. I'm going to be in Philadelphia at the Temple Senior Day basketball game, so I'll probably skip this one tomorrow. But as always, as long as Maryland keeps playing, we'll keep doing these shows. Thanks for watching. Good afternoon. It's Maryland 11, Notre Dame 9.